Chef Jacob here. So today we're going to be opening and unboxing my new Elegoo Mars. Um, I really wanted to give the Pro Model a try, but unfortunately with everything going on with uh, COVID-19, it is out of stock everywhere. I was not able to track one down, so I got the base model and I'm still pretty happy with it. Um, so I'm going to go over a quick overview of what I have, what, it, what you need, safety protection, and then we're going to go ahead and unbox it. And then uh, the following week, I'll be posting up my first initial thoughts and how it prints and everything like that. Alright. Okay, so here you see a quick rundown of everything you need for the printer. I have three bottles of resin. Um, this one and this one were sent to me for the purpose of review by Airy One. Pretty excited to give those a try. And then I also ordered on my own uh, one bottle, 500 grams, of the ABS uh, Clear Blue, which I'm really excited for, uh, by Elegoo. Um, it's important to have latex or nitrile gloves. Um, nitrile's best, but with it as hard as it is to find clothes right now, um, I actually just bought these ones off of work because um, we use those at work. Uh, again, in the current world, it's hard to find 90% uh, or any isopropyl alcohol. So it was recommended to me by a few people who do resin printing to get this Mean Green Super Strength Cleaner. Uh, we'll give it a try and see how it goes. Um, here is the pickle tray meant for cleaning parts. Obviously it's meant for pickles, but you know, I'm a chef, so I thought it was funny. Uh, so here's the, the bat. You put the chemical in there, and then you can just kind of wade your parts up and down so you don't have to worry about trying to touch it while you are cleaning them. Um, and usually you'll want to do that at least twice uh, before you go into your final cure. Right here, I'll get onto this a little bit more later, I'm working on my own curing station. Um, it is my own design and it is an infinity mirror design. Um, I think it looks pretty cool. Right here you can see I'm still working with my uh, my step down buck converter. Um, I'm trying to get the turntable to have a variable speed uh, based on the brightness of the lights. I want it to coincide. Um, I am currently waiting on another turntable to arrive before I can finish it because I did not use my multimeter and I was just going blind and I ended up kind of smoking the first one. So. We are waiting for the next one to come. It should be here tomorrow. And then, of course, last but not least, you need your resin printer. Uh, I decided to give the Elegoo a try. And it seems to have the best reviews and overall uh, larger support in the community. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the unboxing. And then, like I mentioned, next week I will have a video up um, showing how all these things work, my opinions of the resins and everything like that. All right. Alright, time to get this bad boy opened up. Remember when you're using a sharp knife, always pull away from your body. It's an extra safety tip. Because you'll never know when whatever you're cutting lets go and it's going to fly right towards you. impressions it looks like it's packed very well it's a nice thick foam here's our first glimpse of the printer I did elect to get the silver and orange um, I thought it was pretty cool and I liked how it looked um, it also happened to be cheaper but um, I preferred the silver over the black so that's the way I put this one uh, here's the toolkit we'll open this one to get the printer out of the box like it's packed pretty well. See, there's the silver I was talking about, and then the orange as opposed to the black and red. And I believe that's everything in this box. Get that out of the way. Alright, zoom in a little bit just so we can get a better view. I think it looks really nice in this color combination. Again, and always to each their own. I also really wanted to order the special edition from my mini factory, but unfortunately they were out of stock as well because it's a special edition, so it goes to limited runs. Um, so I ended up getting this one. Again. Here's the lid coming off. Nice and stacky. Put the trash to the side. <coughs> and it's completely encased. The foam completely encases all the parts. As you can see right here, you just 
slides right up. The build plate does come out with it. Looks very nice. Now let's remove this last piece of the bag. Here. And the plastic off of the cover. It makes some guessing just a plug, but it is noted that it is a US kit. Uh, I'm assuming that's just going to be the power supply. Alright, first off, we have a metal scraper. Uh, looks like someone was sleeping on the job and they were grinding it. You can see right there, it's a bit rough on the grind, but it'll work. And I already have several others out of the way. Alright, so here is our plug. It is just a U.S. looks like a normal computer style plug. We have this little Allen key screwdriver. That's nifty. Obviously I have those as well, but I don't have any screwdriver kind, so that's a nice addition. Uh, a large Allen key, a small Allen key, and a couple pieces of hardware right there. It did come with a plastic scraper. I wasn't sure if it included it in the kit or not. So I did run up to the local Walmart and I picked up this three pack of plastic scrapers. Um, but I'm happy to have this one because the edge is much finer versus these. So I think that this will work very well. And the main reason for wanting a plastic scraper is so that you don't damage the FEP if parts ever get stuck to it. Um, so it's just nice to have that. Alright, so here is the brick part of the power supply. Again, very basic. It does have a cute little design. Looks very elegant. <coughs> There's a hot commodity right there. A couple surgical masks. It's just to help uh, the breathing in so you don't uh, breathe in as much fumes from the resin. I have not one but two of the Elegoo uh, angle brackets to help drip the, drip the resin off of the print bed after the print is completed. So that's nice. And that's it in that box. Here was the last thing that I pulled out. It has your flash flash drive. Um, I have to check. I'm pretty sure that there's instructions on here as well as your uh, test prints. So there's that. A few uh, nitrile gloves and this little measuring flask. Um, I'm not entirely sure why you would need to measure such a small amount. I've heard many other YouTubers comment on how small this is and that they're probably not going to use it very often. But it's still nice of them to include it. You never know. Um, so yeah, that's everything that's in the toolkit. And then we'll go ahead and get the bed on and power it on and see how everything works. I did notice that I missed two things. I didn't even pay attention. I took them out of the box. Here is the paper cone filters so that you can filter your resin uh, after a print in case you have any failed prints. There might be hardened pieces of resin in there, and then that will cause future fail prints if you don't filter it out. So that's nice. Um, and then here, I didn't honestly expect these to be in here, um, but I'm happy that they are, because uh, my pair is a bit worn out. Just kind of to angle it out of there. It is a new pair of flush cutters, and these ones are spring loaded. So that's nice. And now, that's it. Just a quick look. These are the ones that I already had. Um, they serve me very well. Also spring loaded. Um, but I don't know if the camera will get that close on the teeth. Uh, they don't close anymore all the way. Because I'm not going to name any names, but someone tried to cut something they weren't meant to cut, and now the jaws don't look like that anymore. Alright. Move on. Alright, so here's more of a close up now that it's out of the box. Absolutely loving this color combination. Not, I really don't know why it was uh, actually cheaper than the black and the red. I guess personal preference, maybe people like the black more, but I think the silver looks phenomenal. Alright, so, and then I save this bit for you right here. Listen. Nice and crisp and clean. Go all the way around. And this is the main reason that I looked towards the Elegoo versus the longer 3D. 
Um, I've heard great things about it as well. I just really liked how the enclosure is all one piece versus the longer being several pieces held together. And then the photon, um, the only reason I, I decided towards this over that, aside from the community, is that this completely comes off versus the photon, you know, it, it opens up. Um, so if you need to get to something to, say, adjust the screw on the back or the tension or something, uh, it's a lot easier to access all the moving parts. All right. We'll go ahead and power it on, make sure everything turns on, get the build plate mounted, and I'll go from there. Time for the moment of truth. Again, I just plugged it in, so we're going to reach around to the back, feel around for that switch, turn it, and see it come to life, hopefully. There we go. How exciting is this, guys? All right, so this is the chef's very first resin printer. It's my fourth printer overall, but definitely excited for something new. Just go through here and see how well this touchscreen works. Seems to be pretty receptive. Uh, you could test the exposure, manually adjust the height. Let's see, it'll go 10 millimeters. And if you click that, you can see that the arm goes up. All right, so that works pretty well. Here's how you get to go back. It's a little hard to see the colors on my uh, on my screen. Oh, sorry, this is back. That stops the movement. Uh, back again. See what's in the system. So, let's see what service is. So that just gives you information. So you can go to their Facebook page, their website, or their email address in case you have any issues with your printer. Uh, there's a touch calibration. Don't think I've seen it right now. It seems to be working pretty well. Here is your system information tells you what model ID and version numbers it has. Uh, you can also turn on and turn off the audio here. I'm going to turn it on just to see what that means later on. Uh, languages, uh, you can switch it from Chinese. Uh, no clue that says, but I'm assuming the language button is still the same. And now you can switch it back to English. So I'm guessing if you lived in a different country, there would be a different option loaded besides English. And then a the second is probably always going to be Chinese because that's where the printer's built. So. Yeah, that's that. And then I don't have anything entered, so you can't see any choices here, but that is the print menu. All right. Okay, guys, just a quick test here. Um, if you hit the exposure button here, you not, I'm not going to change any settings. I just want to make sure that the LCD and everything works properly. Uh, generally, it's a good idea to test this before you go forward. Um, the main reason I'm concerned about it is because the delivery driver from Amazon uh, kind of chucked it at my door. Um, I was really impressed with how well it was packaged, and the box didn't seem damaged, so I'm fairly confident everything's okay. Um, I just want to go ahead and check this step before we move forward. So you're going to go right here and hit next. All right, that's going to start exposure, and then in a second you should see light come on, and there is the pattern that matches the screen. So it looks to me that everything is working properly. You can hear the fan. The Z did go up. No problem. Very smooth. Everything's nice and solid. Again, it's only moving because my, my bench itself moves. Um, I haven't secured it to the wall yet. And then everything, all the commands, and everything seems to work perfectly fine. So I'm pretty confident that his uh, carelessness didn't damage the printer at all. Just real quick, I want to show you the last thing that came in the kit. And that is one of these angle brackets. It did come with two. Um, they appear to be exactly the same. So once you're done printing, I haven't done it yet, but once you're done printing um, and you want to let the excess resin drip off of your prints, this piece just kind of slides on here. It's not as tight as I'd like, but you know, it's good for what it's doing. And then you take your print bed and it just kind of slides onto there. You can snug it up if you're worried about it falling. All right. And then it just sits there at an angle so that any excess uh, uncured resin can just drip back into the back before you then filter it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take the cover off and just set it off to the side. Right. Then we'll go back into the settings. And we're going to raise this arm up here for the Z height. it 
all the way up just so we can get plenty of room. Well, I don't have to go all the way up. Okay. Also, for anyone curious, you can see in the back, I'll zoom in in a minute, but you can see in the back here, it's rolling on uh, two polished rails. Um, so it looks like it's pretty solid. It doesn't, like, the whole pair is moving, but it, it's, it feels pretty solid. Like, I'm impressed at how, how well that's held on there. Um, the lead screw does seem to be very smooth. has some lubrication on it. Um, the bat is tightened down as it should be, so you just loosen these two screws right here. And then the whole bat should just slide right out. It's nice, got nice heft to it. I honestly didn't expect this to be metal. But I think it it's, looks pretty well built. You can probably hear. Like it's a nice metal. There's probably half a pound here. Like it's a nice, nice hefty thing for sure. It does have a cover for the FEP right here. Uh, I'm not going to take that off right now because we're not printing right now. Um, but it's just nice to see that they have that covered and well protected. Um, I haven't ordered any yet, but it's always a good idea to have extra FEP sheets on hand. Um, I saw on Amazon, I believe it was 25 or $30 for five more, um, which isn't bad. Um, they generally last through, you know, hundreds of prints potentially, um, but it all depends on how well you take care of it and how well you clean it. And if you, you know, say you hit it with a scraper, if you happen to use the metal scraper instead of this one that's meant for it, you, you could potentially permanently damage it, and at that point you'll need to replace it. So it's just better to have them on hand, uh, because without that FEP sheet, you cannot print. Um, also, um, I started watching videos by the 3D Printing Pro, and he's talking about how to properly tension the sheet. Um, that way it has like the right amount of... You know, so he says, very similar to how this one sounds. It's supposed to sound like a drum. Because if it's too loose, then it will just pull away too too easily, but if it's too tight, then it won't be able to flex, and then your first layer will get stuck to the FEP. So there's that perfect balance there, very similar to like the balance of your belt tension on your FDM printers. It has to have the perfect amount of tension to be able to cure the layer, but have it stick to the build plate and release from the FEP. Um, again, I haven't printed yet, but something that I've heard from a lot of other YouTubers uh, and other reviewers is that for the first hour or two hours of the print, you won't be able to see your, your first layers. So you won't know if it's stuck to this and failed or if it's printing perfectly. Um, the way to tell is that you should hear the general popping noise, which is from the FEP as it releases. So it flexes and it actually bows up in the center and very similar to a, like a flex bed system like my wham bam system on my other printer. It flexes on the sides first and then it pops off the last in the center and it makes that, that pop noise. So the FEP sheet is going to be very similar to that, and if you don't hear that noise um, every few seconds, every time that the the Z bed goes up, then you'll most likely have a failed print, and you'll want to go ahead and cancel it and make sure everything's clean, make sure your FEP is tensioned properly, and at that point you're also going to want to filter your resin, um, because if you had that failed print, then you very likely have some cured resin uh, mixed into the liquid. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and mount the print bed onto the Z-axis. Um, I do really like how it's actually notched out. Some of the other printers, it just kind of slides on um, and it like goes around it. And I feel like this being encapsulated, I think it's going to give a more solid, firm connection. Um, and then also here, these two screws here and here, um, they allow this to pivot. So uh, this is important when you go to level your bed. This included Allen wrench. Uh, you just want to go ahead and loosen these up as you're leveling. And I already loosened the other one. And then it allows like a full 360 pivot here. Uh, and then that way, say if it didn't, and you can also twist it. Obviously, I don't think you want to too much. But that way you can lower it down when it's loose so it's nice and flat. And then you'll just go in and tighten these up to uh, make sure it's perfectly level. Alright. So I'm just going to go ahead and snug that back up while I'm doing this part.
I know it's not level, it doesn't really matter that much right now. And then it's just going to go ahead and slide right on you here. Add a little bit of light for you guys. And then it just slides right on. Alright, push it all the way back. Turn the screw. And once it passes down, again, hold the printer so the whole table doesn't move. And it's not going anywhere. Alright, the whole table is wobbling, but the printer's solid. So I'm really impressed with that. Okay, and then for leveling, just like with our FDM printers, I suggested to use one normal sheet of printer paper. Um, and this is pretty close to 0.2 millimeters, and it's should be about the same thickness as the FEP sheet. Um, so you just go ahead and you put this here, and then there's a button on the screen. You go to Tools, and Manual, there's a button here that looks like it should be level. So you're going to put that there, and then it's going to come down until it's touching. And then once it comes all the way down, you're going to go ahead and adjust these screws so that it's level and nice and tight. And then after that, it should be level and ready to print. There's a little beep. And right there. And once it beeps, you want to adjust it to where you can snugly pull the paper out. So it feels really good right there but you don't want to be able to push it back in, right? So right now, if I push, it's not going. If I push on the sides, obviously I can move it, but right there it seems to be a really good amount of tension. So we're just going to push that paper back, right? Make sure this is a good angle, nice and square. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten it right where it sits. Just going it up there a little bit. I'm only a little at a time, um, because until these are tight, if you tweak it too much, you can always throw the other one out of whack. So just a little bit on the screw until it's nice and snug. Alright, that one's good. That one's good. And again, make sure the paper's nice and snug. Alright, it pulls out, but it won't go back in. So that should be perfectly level. And then we should be good to go ahead and get started printing. I am going to go ahead and do the printing trial and error for my first print and everything uh, off camera. Um, when I have landmarks there, I'll go ahead and record it. And then those parts are going to be in next week's video. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead here and raise the Z height back up a little bit so that I can put the resin back back in. That should be high enough. So I'm going to go ahead. At this point, I'm going to remove the, the sticker. Okay. I'm going to slide the back in. Make sure it settles in the back room, like I mentioned earlier. Snug up the screws. And not going anywhere. And then just to make sure everything's still good, we're going to go ahead and do the Z height again. And it should just land on there perfectly. It should be when it hits the bottom. Alright, there we go. And then we can go ahead and just go back to the, to the menu. Cover back on. And there we go. There is the very first resin printer in my collection. Uh, I can't wait to cook up some really cool creations with this. Alright, real quick, here's what's on the flash drive that came with the printer. Uh, if you go and open it up, there is the Rook, the famous Rook for the Elego Mars, the test print. Uh, here are models offered by my mini factory. Those will be nice to look at. Uh, here's the slicing software. So I actually currently am installing the Chi2Bach for my 64-bit operating system. And then if you go here, here's a list of your machine parameters. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. Not entirely sure exactly yet what that's for. Um, and then the last but not least is this one. I already have it open on my other monitor. Um, this is the instructions, the setup instructions. So, just a digital copy of the manual. Uh, it shows you here everything that was included in the kit. Your different parts. Your different specifications and hardware specs. It shows you here how to put on 
and test the build plate, how to remove the vat, and how to level the, the build plate, and how to you do your first test print, and so on and so forth. So this looks like a very well laid out and helpful manual. Just wanted to give you a quick look at what came on that flash drive. And the one of the biggest complaints about the Elgumars, and you can hear the fan just turned on, is that the USB is in the back. So that's just something that a lot of people nitpick about. Um, I would also prefer not to have to turn the printer around every time I wanted to insert the flash drive. So I went ahead, and this is completely optional, but I went ahead and bought a, I believe it's a three foot or a two and a half foot um, USB extender cable. Now this is meant for data transfer. Um, so it should work perfectly, and it also happens to be USB 3. Um, so this should work great to extend it out. Um, and then later on, I'll probably print them out, or maybe even just put some uh, double-sided tape to hold it there. Something simple. And here's just something else I'm noticing. Um, I went to put the bat back on, and it easily slides too far, or not far enough. But if you, obviously you can tell where the screws are supposed to be. But if you go just the right amount, it actually sets in there. And it's actually in a little a little groove, so you can tell that it's in the right spot. But if you push too far back, obviously, like I said, it's going to go. But then just make sure you find that little groove right there. And then that's when you'll want to tighten these down. And now it's not going anywhere. The whole, again, the whole printer moves. Just a little uh, not-so-pro pro tip. All right. Again, it's not very elegant, but for just right now, I ran the extender around the back. Use some 3M tape that holds on the side well enough. Um, you just take your SD card, or sorry, your USB. Make sure you put it in the wrong direction first and then flip it because that makes it work better. All right, it's flashing and now it's recognized. You have the print screen and then it shows you the files on it. All right, and then if you scroll up, you'll be able to see everything down there. Like here's the rook, and then here's a picture of the rook, so you can see the file. Um, just like with the Chongzi printers, you can see there's a display here. I'm not sure, I'll have to find out in the future if that always works when you use Chitubot, or if it only works with their pre-sliced models. Because um, that was one of the biggest things I was excited for with my XY2 and my X5SA. Um, and unfortunately it only works if you use their older version, uh, modified version of Cura. So um, there is a hack out there to adjust gear to make it work, but it, I didn't gear that much. Um, but here is uh, just a preview of that. We can go through here, go back again, and look at the My Mini Factory files. So here is a dwarf. Yeah, like this one's not showing me. It's not showing the the pictures, so we'll have to see about that. Um, it is showing models offered by my mini factories is twenty seven dollars, so I'm not sure if you have to pay to unlock these um, or not. So we'll have to find that out later. Okay, so in a moment, I'm going to try to do my first print. Again, safe. safety first. Alright, so I'm going to try the airy one first. I think I'm going to give the gray a try. And then we're going to print the rook and just see how everything comes out. Remember to shake it vigorously before use. Just to make sure it's all mixed together. Okay, now it's all shaken up. This is supposed to be low odor. Um, I'm not sure how it smells when it cures. But I can already smell a pretty strong odor coming out of the bottle. Um, and these, are, like I said, are branded as ultra low odor. So I can't wait to smell what the regular one smells like.
Um, again, that's why I waited so long um, to get my first resin printer is because I wanted to wait until I had a garage so I can be outside and not have to worry about my family breathing it in. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour some in here. That should be plenty. I'm just printing the rooks. So you just want to make sure you don't drip any on your printer. Put the cap back on. And again, the reason it's so important to wear your gloves is it won't always hurt you necessarily, but there is a good chance that resin can burn your skin, um, especially if you don't realize it's on your skin and then you go out into the sun. Uh, the UV in the sun will cure it to your skin and then that gets really hot. And you can see right here, I got some on the gloves. So imagine if I wasn't wearing these, I could potentially be getting a chemical burn right now or later when I go in the sun. Um, so that's why it's so important to make sure you wear your, your personal protective equipment, your PPEs. All right, so the resin is in there. I already leveled this twice, so hopefully everything will work fine. Um, I know a lot of people have trouble with their first couple prints, so we will see. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna throw the cover back on, and then I'm gonna hit the start button. And then I'll show you a little bit as it's printing, and then uh, hopefully as it's done. All right, cover's on. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the print button. And it's currently lowering down. You should see it lower down. I believe it's going to beep again. And then you'll see the, the resin is going to come around it. It's kind of a cool, cool sight. And that's always the best thing about wearing these PPEs. Going through this pandemic right now. Um, I have to wear masks like this at work. So I've noticed a lot because I do wear glasses. That they fog up. I don't know if you can see in the camera or not, but they fog up a lot. If you tuck it under a certain way, you know, hopefully it won't, but you know, again, it is what it is. You just want to make sure you stay safe. All right. So it looks like this is a approximately a four hour print. It looks like it has a thousand layers. So we're just going to go ahead and Give it some time and you'll notice the resin is all the way up around the build plate except for right there. It's not for a lack of it being level. Um, it's actually the table that's not level. Um, so hopefully that doesn't affect anything too much. Um, and then going forward, I'll make sure that I level the printer to the table or the table to the floor. That way that, that doesn't happen. Um, but it already did go up once. We're on layer two now. And I did hear the popping noise. I'm hoping it'll go up soon so you can hear it too. And right there. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera or not, but there was a gentle popping. It goes up and then it goes back down for the next layer. And now we're on layer three. So hopefully this is gonna be uh, beginner's luck and I will have a successful print on my first attempt. Um, this is the pre-sliced works and there's no supports, so it is a little easier for it to be successful. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see these.